cataract coach with a case of a cataract surgery in a patient with a small pupil. The patient's elderly, 88 years old, the pupil small. It's a small eye. The patient's going to get a 25 Doppler lens. It's a small white to white. We just put some anesthetic in the eye, some preserved free lidocaine. Still doesn't dilate the pupil. We'll now try to do some viscomedriasis with a dispersive viscoelastic and not much help either. We'll make our main incision. We're going to have to do some pupil stretching here to get a sufficiently large pupil. Could you put in a pupil expansion device, a ring, some iris hooks, you could certainly do that as well. That'd be a very reasonable option. But in this case, can we do the surgery without resorting to those devices? We're going to start off here by using two choppers to stretch the pupil. There are specific devices that are available for pupil stretching. Instrument is designed just for that. But here, two choppers is sufficient. One chopper through the paracentesis to hook the iris, the other through the main incision. That is most of the work. Pushing out towards the angle of the eye. We had a good stretch there. We'll do a little bit in the opposite direction here. Don't need to do much more. That first stretch is probably sufficient. Push the iris here a little bit, and we can grab this iris. Let's push these apart. I think we're pretty good. Now, this patient is taking Flomax, which is Tamsulosin for his prostatic issues to help him urinate. Well, as we know, that affects the eye as well. More viscoelastic is used there to viscodilate. Now we switch over to a brighter red reflex. Use our forceps here. We're going to start our capsorexis. Now this is still only a pupil of about 4 millimeters, maybe 4.5. So we're going to have to make the rexis larger than the pupil. And as I continue this around 360 degrees, you'll notice that not even once will you see the edge of the rexus. So we are definitely making a 5 or even 5.5 millimeter capsular rexus in this patient. So there's the completion of the cap... Oh, little movement for the patient. He just wants to be nice and help us do the rexus. So now that the rexus is complete, I'm sure I have at least a 5 millimeter rexus. We now can prolapse this nucleus out of the capsular bag. So gentle on the hydrodice action. This is not forceful. I don't want the iris to prolapse out. That's just about sufficient. Now dig in and bring that nucleus up. And there we have it. Now it's a relatively shallow anterior chamber. This is a 25 diopter lens. We can only bring it partially out. That was a recoat of the endothelium using dispersive viscoelastic. The iris is being held open or at bay by the cataract. Faco probe being placed in the eye. Chopper as well. Buzz in with the probe. Bring the chopper across. And pow, we'll chop it right in half. There are the two halves. Now we have two halves. Beautiful. Use the phaco probe to do a little more aspiration. Phaco aspiration, a little ultrasound. Take down that first half. Now we're not at the endothelium, we're at the iris plane, very important. We don't want to ride the endothelium, we don't want to kill off endothelial cells. We're deeper in the eye. There's the second half of the nucleus, we can chop it again, and there are two halves of that. So now these are the two quarters, take out each of these quarters. Chopper being used to push the cataract pieces and keep them in front of the phaco probe at all times. Now the chopper goes into a safety position to ensure the posterior capsule does not come in contact with the probe. That looks pretty good. We'll take it. Note that the pupil starts to come down again. Very typical for this Flomax type patient. So take the eye probe, put it in the eye, take out this little bit of epinuclear shell, take out the cortex. Again, going 360, back and forth. And we make sure we get under the rexus edge, which means the tip of it disappears under the iris. And we want to make sure we move all the cortex from 360 degrees. In a small, smaller pupil case like this, you could actually end up inadvertently leaving some nuclear material or cortex behind. We've got to be careful that we don't. We'll fill the eye with our cohesive viscoelastic. 
And that's going to expand the pupil and deepen the capsular bag. And here comes our IOL. So IOL in this case is going to be a toric lens, single piece acrylic lens. Now you're wondering why the patient's moving so much. This patient got nothing in the IV. This is only topical and a little intracameral lidocaine. No IV sedation whatsoever due to health issues. There's the eye wall going in the capsular bag. Leading haptic certainly went in. Let's get the trailing haptic in, nice and deep in the bag. And it is a torque lens, so let's place the lens a little bit shy of the final position. And now, importantly, let's check 360. Use the chopper, lift the iris with the eye still full of viscoelastic. Oh, there's some stuff. There's a little bit of cortex material there sub-incisionally. There it is more. See that? We'll have to get that out. That can't stay. The rest, you can see it's under the rexus edge. There's the rexus, by the way. Looks like a beautiful rexus. So now let's take the eye, a probe in the eye. Take out that cortex that we saw. There it is. Go under the eye well. Remove this scholastic. You also see the torque marks on the eye well. That looks great. Remove the remaining viscoelastic, clean up the anterior chamber as well. That looks beautiful. Tie up with the chopper in the eye. The phaco probe of the IA probe is on position one. And we're going to rotate the lens to line up our toric marks. In this patient, it's approximately the 180 degree meridian. That looks great. So a little bit more rotation, lining up our marks. I'll take it. So we saw here you've got a case of a smaller pupil, an elderly patient, hyperopic eye, flow max use, and we could still do the case without having to resort to iris hooks or pupil expansion devices. And in a case that's unedited, only about seven minutes. So I encourage you to give this technique a try. I'm sure you'll be happy you did. Thank you for watching.